little kermit -y frog here. Kermit, I think you may be on the wrong set. This isn't The Muppet Show. This is the underground lair. Hmm. No, but it's cool that you're here because we are going to be talking about some friends of yours. of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory where from time to time we pay tribute to the mad scientists, supervillains, and evil geniuses that help inspire us to create and just become, I was going to say better people, maybe that's not the correct word. Well in this case I think I think the people that we're talking about today, and today is a special day because you're getting two for, you're getting a two for one. We've got two inductees today and even though their inventions are mm, not always super successful, I think you'll find that they're, they're more or less trying to do some good in the world. So not quite the Evil Genius Hall of Fame, but that's why we call this the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. And we are going to, we're going to do, we're going to commission a little drawing and we're going to put it on the wall and induct two people, you know who they are if you read the description, into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. Let's get to it. All right, so as I mentioned, we are going to do things a little differently this time around. This is a first for us. We have not one, but two recipients who are going to be inducted in the Mad Genius Hall of Fame because, in my opinion, you really can't have one without the other, even though technically one of them did premiere a little bit before the other one came about in Muppets history. But we're going to get into a little more about that, and we're going to do what we always do, which is talk a little bit about the characters, and also about the drawing itself, some of the tools that I'm using to create the portrait that is going to hang in the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. So a little bit about that drawing. What I'm working on right now is I'm just laying out some of the gesture drawings. You maybe see a faint little uh, hint of beaker right now that I'm, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> working on. Uh, and I tend to start drawing a little bit light and then I'll add more as we go. Um, and there's the famous, <laughs> you know, that light socket hair. Um, but anyway, so laying out the gestures with my Colorace uh, red color pencil and I'm using uh, Kona plastic paper and it's it's nice it's got sort of a nice tan look to it and that's sort of the theme we're going through throughout all these portraits we want to keep them consistent and everything so that's what I am using for that we'll get we'll talk a little more about the drawing as we go on and we move to different stages but right now like I said we're just sort of penciling in the characters now we're working a little bit on Bunsen and uh, speaking of Bunsen speaking of the Muppets let's talk more about the character or in this case, characters, because like I said, we got two of them. So let's welcome the Muppets' own resident scientist, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, and his reluctant lab assistant, Beaker, into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. Uh, this this one is super important to me. This is another one. I, I know I've said that quite a bit because a lot of these characters I just I just really do love. But this one is sort of a special one to me um, because of these characters and just my love of the Muppets in general. If you know anything about me, you know I absolutely adore the Muppets. And uh, you know Sesame Street premiered. I think like three months before I was born, so it was the first television show that I remember watching, and it was a huge influence on me, and uh, me and my brother. Uh, my brother and I, we had most, I remember we had most of the, the Sesame Street hand puppets. I remember having Ernie and Bird and Cookie Monster and Oscar the Grouch and all those guys. Um, and you know we would do puppet shows with them and everything and my brother's room for the longest time was decorated in a Sesame Street theme. He even had that iconic, uh, like a replica of that iconic street lamp from, uh, from Sesame Street that my mom and dad had built for him and it worked and everything. It was, it was really cool. Um, and you know I consider Jim Henson to be one of my biggest influences, mostly because of his creativity and his ability to you know, come up with so many beloved characters, but also as a puppeteer, early in my life, or in my career rather, I worked in children's entertainment and I created an educational children's show that featured, you know, some costume characters, but also a few few puppets, and I even performed a couple of those puppets. And it wasn't quite as cool as the Muppets because in the Muppets, uh, the performers, actually they'll do the voice and they'll do the puppeteering and everything. In my show, we hired some voice actors to do some of the voices because I'm not the best voice guy. Um, 
Um, but, you know, I got me... I, got me a chance to play around with puppets and I'm a little out of shape as you could probably tell from that intro um, but anyway uh, yeah I did early on I did really want to be a puppeteer and everything and I you know like I said I love the Muppets and uh, I remember when the Muppet show first premiered my parents my parents told me about it you know there had been some buzz around it before it actually premiered and they told me that hey there's gonna be this show it's kind of like Sesame Street but it's gonna be on at night so it was like a, a prime time show and up until then you know Sesame Street that was just on during the daytime but uh, they also told me that the only character that was gonna be on there was gonna be Kermit the Frog and I, at, at the time I kind of thought that was odd because there's so many you know Sesame Street characters and Kermit the Frog was all he was kind of a at the time he was kind of a background character he did like the you know he was sort of the news uh, newscaster guy and they, of course he did like it's not easy being green and he had segments like that but he wasn't like a major character in Sesame Street so when I heard he was starring I was kind of like oh well you know what like like I was kind of worried that my favorites like Grover and Cookie Monster wouldn't wouldn't you know weren't gonna be on it so I wasn't sure what to think but if I had any worries about that they immediately fade, faded away when I when the Muppet Show premiered and I saw all these amazing you know new characters and um, yeah and of course Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beakers were among those great characters. Now, if you watched the intro to the video, you may have noticed that Kermit's voice was a little off, and that may be due to the fact that there's some controversy recently because a uh, longtime Muppet performer and the voice and puppeteer for Kermit the Frog, Steve Whitmire, ha had recently been let go. I think he was let go a little while ago, but he finally kind of came out and told his story and everything. And it's kind of an interesting, interesting story. Uh, we won't get too much into this because we're not really, <laughs> Kermit's not our main focus on this one. But I just wanted to bring that up because uh, Whitmire also performed uh, Beaker since 1992. And there's a lot of talk recently about you know how Kermit has been replaced but the thing about Muppeteers is they often perform a number of other characters and uh, and so when one of them dies or retires or is replaced it usually affects more than just one character and in this case uh, Beaker is one of those characters um, so anyway speaking of Beaker you can see I'm starting to add some color to him and to to Bunsen Honeydew, just doing some of the skin tones and everything like that. And I, and using this, I'm using Copic markers. I use a variety of different markers, mostly Copics, but I also use Spe Spectrum Noir and some Pantone Trio markers, um, just any kind of alcohol-based markers. But um, yeah, and I really like the way they lay down on this uh, on this tan paper. Not all the colors work because it does. It, you don't you don't really know exactly how different colors are going to react because it's not just white paper. Um, but it's fun to kind of experiment and and play around with that. So we're going to continue to do that as we talk a little bit more about uh, our inductees. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew is a portly, balding, green-skinned Muppet scientist with glasses. And Bunsen's look is interesting because the character doesn't really have any eyes to speak of. He's just got a pair of sort of round, lensless spectacles. And it's funny because ever so often he'll like take off his glasses and there's just like no eyes there. <laughs> it's just, it's, I just always found that sort of a funny, a funny look. So the name Bunsen is in reference to Robert Bunsen for whom the Bunsen burner is named after. And his last name Honeydew has sort of a double meaning, uh, partially because he resembles a honeydew melon, as you can kind of tell by the drawing <laughs> right now. Um, and it's also a nod to the technology company Honeywell Labs who you know you guys probably heard Honeywell they've been around for a while but in and the time the Muppet Show premiered they had a popular slogan which was someday is today at Honeywell and this also inspired the mantra for Muppets Labs which was Muppet Labs where the future is being made today. Uh, Bunsen Honeydew first appeared in 1976 and he was designed by Jim Henson and performed by Dave Goles who also built the character. Although Honeydew made several appearances in the first season of The Muppet Show, he would do so solo until the second season when his lab assistant Beaker was introduced and the pair have been pretty much inseparable ever since. 
In addition to The Muppet Show, the duo have went on to have significant roles in almost every major Muppet property, including The Muppet Movie, The Great Muppet Caper, uh, The Muppet Christmas Carol, where they played charity collectors, uh, Muppet Treasure Island, where Bunsen portrayed Dr. David Livesey, and Beaker was his assistant. Uh, they were also in Muppets from Space, uh, Muppets Wizard of Oz, where they both played Emerald City technicians. In addition, Honeydew and Beaker played a major role in the Disney theme park attraction Muppet Vision 3D, uh, where they were the inventors of the Muppet Vision technology. And if you ever got a chance to see that show, I think they don't have it in California Adventure anymore, but I think they still, hopefully, I think they still have it at Disney World. It was a great show. Um, I always enjoyed watching it whenever I had a chance to go to California, but they don't have it there anymore. But anyway. <laughs> uh, they each also appeared in the 1996 series Muppets Tonight, and much younger animated versions of the characters appeared in Muppet Babies. Uh, Honeydew was voiced by first Howie Mandel and then David Collier, and it's no surprise that Beaker was voiced by Frank Welker, and if you know anything about voice acting, you know that Frank Welker is the go-to guy for any kind of character that speaks in like weird sound effects or has weird speech impediments or anything like that. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's really no surprise that, that he is the voice of Beaker in that show. And uh, anyway, so I guess we should turn our attention uh, once more back to the drawing. Again, we're just adding some more color here. Um, a lot of the, uh, you know, I just love, I love drawing like little flasks and beakers, not, not beaker the character, well I like drawing beaker the character, but you know, uh, I like drawing all those test tubes and things like that, it's always fun, so this one's, uh, this one's got a lot of nice color to it, and uh, yeah, it is coming along, so um, yeah, this is one of my favorites so far. Um, but I shouldn't play favorites because we should treat all our inductees uh, equally because they all deserve to be honored. Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker remain just as popular today as they did when they premiered in The Muppet Show way back when. And recently they've kind of had a resurgence. They starred in the 2001 film The Muppets and its sequel Muppets Most Wanted and in the short-lived Muppets television show simply titled The Muppets. And you know, I really loved that that show a lot, and I was kind of bummed out when they canceled it. Uh, there, there. I guess there was some controversy. A lot of people thought that it skewed the age range, skewed a little older than what the Muppet should have been. But if you know anything about Jim Henson, you know that he never intended his creations to be solely for kids. He wanted them to be for everyone, and he a lot of his stuff he wanted to skew older. And I don't think the Muppets were that much of an exception. Um, in in the series, I mean, there were a lot of jokes that were for adults, but there's still a lot of stuff in there for kids, and I don't think, I don't think the older stuff was anything, you know, that the kids would even get, or, or you know, really anything that bad. But evidently, people had kind of a major problem with it, and that was that was part of the reason why the show unfortunately was canceled. Um, but yeah, like I said, I I don't I I don't really think they were thinking of. Jim Henson's vision, because I think Jim Henson would have liked that show. And one of the reasons why is, I mean, a lot of people thought, well, it's so different from The Muppet Show, but that, I think that's what made it great, because in the 70s, when The Muppets premiered, or The Muppet Show premiered, it was sort of a parody of something that was big at the time, which was these variety shows. Now, in you know today's age, variety shows aren't really a thing anymore, but what, what is popular, are sort of the you know behind the scenes documentary style television shows like The Office and you know Parks and Rec and things like that and so they were commenting on something that was popular at the time and I think I think the Muppets need to do that I think the Muppets need to evolve with what's what's current so that's why I was kind of uh, a little bummed out when that show was canceled because I was really curious to see where it went and I thought it was just hilarious so uh, just my two cents on that <laughs> guys may have a different opinion on that but uh, those are my thoughts but enough about that let's go back to talking about our inductees and we're gonna go back to the Muppet Show so uh, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker starred in one of the reoccurring sketches on the Muppet Show which was Muppet Labs and there were a number of these type of sketches uh, you know pigs in space veterinary hospital Muppet News Flash the Swedish chef 
there are a lot of those, and those are, you know, a lot of my favorites were, you know, just when these things pop back on again. And uh, I always, I always got really happy when I saw Muppet's Lab part pop up. Uh, but as part of Muppet Labs, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew would often introduce the latest scientific breakthrough. Uh, Honeydew's inventions, while somewhat effective, were usually plagued by a number of bizarre side effects, usually resulting in bodily harm being inflicted on his unfortunate lab assistant Beaker. And this was always played to comic effect. It was usually only temporary as Beaker would often return the following ep episode virtually unscathed. Um, as mentioned, Beaker first appeared in the second season of The Muppet Show, and he's physic sort of physically the opposite to Honeydew. Beaker is tall and thin, he's got crazy wild orange hair, he's got these large ping pong ball eyes and this drawbridge mouth, and he was performed originally by Richard Hunt, who sadly passed away in 1992, and after that, Steve Whitmire took over the role and as I said before he's since left the organization and I'm not sure you know if they've announced who's going to play Beaker now um, but Beaker famously speaks in these kind of high-pitched me 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 sounds and on rare occasions he's been able to sound out words like bye bye but it always kind of has that that it sounds very meepish, um, for lack of a better term. And in the Muppet movie, he mimicked uh, Bunsen Honeydew saying, sadly temporary, uh, referring to the effects of the Instagirl pills, which temporarily turned Animal into a giant. And uh, so, you know, there are there have been times where other Muppets were affected by uh, Honeydew's invention. It wasn't always Beaker, it was usually Beaker. Um, so sometimes he was spared. Actually, I don't know that he was totally spared because before all that happened to the Muppet Show, they were testing out some other inventions on him and everything. So, speaking of inventions, in addition to the ones we've already discussed, the Muppet Vision 3D and the Instagirl pills, uh, I'm going to list some of my favorite inventions uh, that, that these two uh, were involved in. Uh, there was the all purpose tenderizer, the gorilla detector exploding clothes, <laughs> nuclear shaver, uh, hair raising tonic, the electric nose warmer, elevator shoes, edible paper clips, shrinking pills, so in addition to the Instagirl there were also shrinking pills. Uh, the One of my favorites was the banana sharpener, have you ever seen that episode? And the ever popular robot Abraham Lincoln. So you can kind of get an idea of some of the wacky inventions that they, they were involved in. Uh, but kind of let's, let's turn our attention back once again to the drawing where I'm going over the colors now that I put the colors in and we kind of do a sort of things in reverse at this stage where we put the colors in first and then we do the outlines. Just, it's kind of surprising you get to see it take shape a little, you know, a little better I think when we do it this way and uh, I don't know, it seems to work out. So I am using uh, Deleter Black number no. 5 uh, Manga Ink. That's uh, pretty much my favorite style ink and uh, I am using, right now I'm using a Cotman watercolor brush. Sometimes I'll use a Winsor Newton uh, Series 7 brush. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to go in and, and fill all this stuff in. But uh, yeah, it's really, you know, these, these characters, because they're mad scientists, because they're Muppets, there's just so many reasons why I wanted to uh, induct them into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. So this is kind of like, I, I, I take a lot of requests and I want to hear from you guys who, who you would like to see in the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. But this is sort of my personal pick. This is who I would induct. So I went with two different characters. So yeah, I want to know, I want to know what you guys think as I... You know, as I finish this drawing up, you can see right now I am adding sort of a white highlight around and this just to keep it consistent with all the other characters. We want all the portraits to kind of have that same look and feel, so this is the look we established in the beginning. And I think it helps sort of pop the characters off the page. We've got sort of that kind of that dull tan color and you know this helps really pop it off. So uh, like I was saying, if you guys have an inductee that you would like 
to uh, to be a part of the 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 wall, the Mad Genius Hall of Fame, to be celebrated, please let me know. You know, leave leave in the comment uh, the comment section who you want to see in the Mad Scientist Hall of Fame or the Mad Genius Hall of Fame rather, and uh, the reason why 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 should they be inducted? And there's a lot of characters out there, um, and we've got quite a list going. And your favorite may already be on the list, but but nevertheless, don't don't hesitate to let me know because I want to I want to put them in there. So. Hit me up with those suggestions. And if you're interested in seeing some of our past inductees, there is a playlist, a Mad Genius Hall of Fame playlist on the channel. And uh, also, if you want to see more, just hit that subscribe button. All right, it's unveiling time. Now, you guys got a sneak peek, but nevertheless, we're going to reveal what the finished portrait looks like. So let's take a look. There you go. Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker are now officially on the wall of fame, the Mad Genius Wall of Fame. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone.